You seem loose this week, though, man. Oh yeah, this is like the this is like my fifteenth fight, and like I just started fighting like four years ago, about this time, like MMA period. So um, I'm pretty stoked. It's easy. I mean, that's like what. A, what like five four fights four a year, year yeah four fights a year essentially but i did like most of them in the first two and then uh when you get into the big show there's so many other fighters out there uh you don't get to fight as often so but i love to fight all the time you're you're coming into this one um on a bit of a skit i think two in a row and you had four wins in a row yeah at 12 because in yeah dude in oregon amateur mma is professional mma everywhere else man i mean not to be a, a jerk but the Pacific Northwest has some of the toughest dudes in the world. So. What, what do you sort of attest that to? Is there anything that happened? Oh, yeah. Dude, mental. All mental, man. Like, I'm not mental, but it is all mental. And uh, I had so much happen in my personal life. I don't have a very uh, large family, but we had some losses and uh, a lot of, like, just, you know, internal struggles that I didn't uh, work on. And I, you know, uh, she's my, we just got married, my wife and I, we uh, were dealing with that. And she was so awesome and supportive. I should have brought her with. It probably would have changed the outcome, but she's coming to this one. So I'm pretty, first fight, uh, Bellator fight, she can come out to. Uh, that's definitely what attributed to it, because I have everything there. I mean, I have wrestling, I got the striking, man, my clinch work, my grappling, all that is, it's all solid. Uh, but the mental side is everything. And for 12 fights in a row, I was mentally crazy ready, so. So with the kind of people that you get to work with up there, I mean, mm -hmm. what do you kind of pick from them in terms of working on the mental part of the game? So it, it wasn't really something we ever had to worry about because I'm called Sunshine for a reason, man. Like, I have a lot of fun. But at one point, I just stopped having fun. I don't know. Maybe I, like, burned out a little bit or something. You know, I was training three-something times a day uh, for, like, three years straight almost. And I just, I think I just kind of, yeah, like, pooped out a little bit. And uh, it was just at a really poor timing uh, but man, this camp, it just, I don't know how to explain it. It brought it all back. It feels like it's like my first fight again. Everything's fun. I've never been like as close to weight as I've ever been. I was working with uh, Tyler Minton, I think is how you say his name. He's like a, one of those Lockhart guys. So man, that's been the easiest part, nutrition. So like, yeah. What do you make of your opponent, 2-0, you know, Bellator, kind of has a shine on him? Oh, don't say shine, dude. That's my word. Yeah, yeah he's got he's got some good publicity. He, he uh, beat, I can't wait to to meet him when he seems like a cool guy. I think he's got like an accent, right? Like yeah. Chicago accent. Maybe we'll get some pizza afterwards for sure. Um, I'm really excited to beat him because beating him, he beat that like weird guy from Oklahoma that's all like a super jack for a 145, let's be real. Um, so it'll be like getting two for one in this special, you know what I mean? And then I ran into my buddy, uh, you know, uh, Claxton, and we'll have to run that back at some point too. So I'm excited. It's like three birds with one stone for this fight, so. What do, you, what do you mean by big for 145? What the one guy? Oh come on, man! His acne was all out of the place. I mean, come, I mean, dude, I've 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 worked out in weightlifting gyms. Let's just put it that way. You know, I don't want to. Shoot, man! So many people are on freaking gear or this and that. You know, I'm an all natural skinny boy right here. This is what you get. You know. You, so, so earlier this week, Chandler said that Bellator fighters kind of have that stigma that they're not in the UFC because uh -huh. of no drug testing. Do you think that's that's an accurate statement. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that. No, I just think, uh, uh, dude, cheaters are gonna cheat. Period. Right? I mean, it doesn't matter if you're fighting, you know, NFL, NBA, your friggin' relationships. Cheaters cheat, right? Um, and I don't think that matters at the end of the day. I think it's all up here. And I think cheaters are mentally weak. So uh, I don't I don't play that card, man. I'm 24 years old. I got a big, nice package. I'm trying to keep it in shape. You know what I mean? I want to have some beautiful ass kids. I'm not messing around with steroids. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, off tangent there. <laughs> Do you wish there was stricter drug testing? Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, totally. I did. I'd submit a blood test every month, every two weeks even. I mean, I don't know what's the limit on that. I'd do it because right now. I would even do it if it even like increased like pay to be honest with you because I wouldn't I know that everyone's always people always you know bitch about money and this and that you know you you get what you make I think, um, but definitely I think if we were stricter and we were even more like raising the standards I think it would bring a lot more uh, financial gain to the sport it wouldn't feel like we're just like giving a bunch of you know ex cons and whatever fucking you know thousands of dollars to just beat the shit out of each other let's clean it up a little bit I mean look at me right. You, you train with the Chael, right? Yeah, I train with, yeah, yeah, Master Chael P. Master Chael P. What, what do you make of his fight with uh, Lyoto Machida? <sighs> Man, dude, I feel bad for Machida, dude. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's got the, the, the spins and stuff, but you just can't, 
dude, dude, Chael's undefeated, man. He's undefeated. You can't touch that. He's just got everything mentally and physically. I, I think it's going to be a great fight for him. So he's just done outstanding in Bellator, beating all these guys, you know, just at the wrong times, I think. So. Does he have it in him to make another legit run, maybe for the title? <sighs> Dude, I think so. I think 110%. I mean, you know, the internet's silly, but look at who he's beat, man. Look at how long he's been around, how long he's been whooping ass. I mean, okay, he's not as, you know, crazy flashy with these weird ass, like, triple. What did that guy do, a 720 spin yeah, knockout? Yeah. Uh, the RD guy, yeah. Dude, I mean, whatever. You know what, dude? He wins. He beats guys that, you know, have beaten some of the best in the world. Is he, be is he behind the banner? Is he, like... How much is he coaching you on what to say? Oh, I don't know. I was like, shoot, is he really on this banner? That'd be creepy right now. No, I don't know. I'm just... Well, that's, that's what I asked you earlier, though. How much do you pull from, from guys like that in the gym? And it seems like you're pulling I, a little bit... I just talk a lot of shit. I've talked a lot of shit for, like, four... I don't want to cuss. I, like, have my own gym, and I have kids and stuff that watch this. But, like, we just, like, talk crap all day. For the last four years, since I started MMA to now, it's been a four-year process. And I met Shale on the first day, like, when we were in an old little gym... Um, and he hadn't, I don't think he'd even signed with Bellator yet. And it was really cool. He was like, he said some really cool inspirational, like, you know, inspirational Confucius shit. And I was just like, yeah, let's get it. And now here we are. So. Sort of on that point real quick, I, I asked Donald Cerrone last week um, what he makes, or, or is, is there anything that still surprises him? And he said all the younger fighters that, that talk crap, as you say. What, what I mean, as uh, you, you just said, like, you, you do talk crap. Why, well, yeah. Why is that? And, and I think it's, I think you're misinterpreting it. When I mean, I mean shoot the shit, you okay. know. I'm talking shoot the shit. I'm really not for that whole, like, I'm going to murder your family, you know, and get religion. Like, that's just, that kind of, it's overplayed. I like playing around. I think if you can't handle it, that makes it even better for me. If you can't handle it, I know I'm whooping your ass. Like, if I made fun of your shirt and you're just like, <laughs> I'm like, you're done. That's it. Game over. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I see your American Eagle there. It's cool. I get it. This is Nordstrom, but it's all good, you know. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff I like to do. I don't, the whole punching and shit behind stage and sh that, that just, that's really, like, immature too far it's immature man we fight in the cage what the heck i mean dude you're setting an example yeah all right we fight in the cage but this whole i've been doing martial arts since i was like six i got i was in a taekwondo i don't want to go into detail on that but i was a taekwondo guy and then wrestling because we couldn't afford taekwondo and then judo and now you know that transition to jujitsu mma and it's got a lot of culture there that you got to respect so yeah what do you make of this uh Playing featherweight tournament they've been talking about. I, dude, I am not playing with you, man. When I beat this guy, I better be in some dark horse contention for that, you know what I mean? Because I put in work and I just, I don't stop fighting, man. I take every fight they've ever offered me, like within 10 minutes, that bout agreement is signed. I went in on that tournament, man. You know, I mean, mix it up. You, there's, there's enough guys. You know, what, 16? Yeah. So 16, man? Yeah, there's plenty. We got plenty of guys. Mix it yeah. up, dude. No one wants to see this. No one wants to see Brazilians fighting each other all the time. Come on. Do you think the champion should be in the tournament? No. No, not at all. That's weird. Like you're the Rory, champ. Like Rory running through the world? Yeah, no, I don't get that. If you're the champion, there should be a tournament to get to you. That makes sense. Or you're the last one of the tournament. Like, that just is like some Pokemon shit. That'd be dope. You know what I mean? You didn't, you know, you beat the final four and then you go against the, the main guy. It's not like, you know, you're not going to fight the main guy in the final four. Yeah. So. That was a powerful reference. Dude, I, you know, it's funny. I was getting my hair, hair done the other day and there was this like six year old kid sitting next to me laughing at me the whole time. And I was like, I want to hit you. I can't hit you. I'm like locked in this little like hair blow dryer thing and he was like playing with pokemon and i was looking at him and i was like how long you've had those he's like oh since i was a little whatever he's like six or like half his life i'm like dude pokemon came out in the 90s when i was a kid like it's been around forever everyone still plays it i'm a i'm kind of a nerd i don't want to talk about it i don't want to get into detail about that but yeah